It's now time for What's Up Asheville, sponsored by the city of Asheville, with the host, Mr. Sam Parada, and here he is. Good afternoon, Nashville. Welcome to What's Up Asheville here on WRES 100.7 FM. I'm your host, Sam Ferreira, communication specialist with the city of Asheville. And today with me, I have two employees from the fire department, Kelly Klope. She works closely with us. How are you, Kelly? I'm great. How are you? Doing great. And Jeremy Brooks, who I just met today. How are you? I'm doing great. How are you? Doing fantastic. Thank you. And thank you for joining me today. Uh, now, Today we'll be talking about many fire-related things, academies, lots of them, um, especially the Citizens Fire Academy happening next month in August, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, as well as other things. But first, I want to get to know you guys a little bit better. So, sure. Kelly, tell yes. me more about you. What's your position? What's your day-to-day like? What do you do? So I have the honor of serving as the public information officer for the Asheville Fire Department. I have worked for the fire department for 27 years. I am a certified firefighter, worked on a truck for a few years, and then um, throughout the, my career I've had different positions, but ultimately have landed here as the public information officer for many years now. Um, and so day to day, basically I'm the conduit for information to and from Um, internally and externally. So my goal is to help inform and educate externally our our community, what's going on within the fire department, whether it's um, incidents, events that might affect them, if there's a gas leak, a car wreck, a house fire, something like that, letting them know what's going on, Um, all the way to fire and life safety education prevention event uh, um, tips and things like that. So in, I'm uh, a source of information for them. They can call me and, and ask general questions. Uh, same thing internally. I do my best to help keep our firefighters educated and up to date on what's going on mm-hmm. from, from senior staff down. Yeah. So <laughs> you've probably seen Kelly either on social media mm-hmm. or on TV interviews a lot. Um, she's a girl. Yes. <laughs> and Jeremy, what do you do and how long have you been with the city? So I am the fire and life safety educator for the department. Um, my job, I'm in schools a lot, um, businesses at times doing uh, different trainings. And um, we provide you know, a lot of programs internally to our firefighters with the car seats and stuff. So I manage all those programs and make sure that those certifications are upheld as well. Um, my favorite thing to do is to be in the schools and um, watch children, the children grow and um, learn about our positions because mm-hmm. they love us. They love the fire trucks. Um, I want them to know that we are a resource for them in any time that they need it and that, uh, you know, we're here for them. We're here to serve them because we are their community helpers. Yep. I love that. Um, do you think you could come to my house to teach me a lesson? I think our fire extinguisher <laughs> might be like a few months <laughs> yeah. out. <laughs> yeah, we, we do that. Um, we provide that as a free service to all of our local businesses. So anybody that needs that, um, we schedule them out and um, do. I use a lot of Kelly's old videos and um, things like that. If, if that's a route they want to go before I get there. And um, then we have a pan that's a burn pan that's been around since Kelly had it created years ago. <laughs> and uh, do live fire training so you get to feel the mm-hmm. heat and, and what appropriate distance and, and stuff you should be from a fire when trying to extinguish it. Oh, wow. Yeah, and those are things that like me as a non-fire person would never right. think about. So, um, yeah, I might have to join one of your classes at some right. point. Right. Uh, but thank you for bringing up that video. I think we talked about this yeah, recently. Our most viewed YouTube video on the city's uh, YouTube page is of Kelly teaching how to use a fire extinguisher. Yeah, it's, it's amazing because, like Jeremy said, a lot of businesses, well, businesses are required by OSHA to, to have mm-hmm. annual training. So instead of oh. always bringing someone in, they might just show that video. So it might be for orientation or it might be for annual training. Um, <clears throat> it's kind of cute. I received a message from a woman <laughs> out in California. She sent me a video of her toddler who loved to watch that video. Why they ever got a hold of it, I don't know. <laughs> but it was very entertaining to watch his toddler do the whole pull, aim, squeeze, sweep. So I commended him on his efforts, and I sent him a package of goodies that Jeremy provided for, for little kids and just encouraged him to, to continue that fire and life safety message throughout his yeah. life. 
Oh, that's awesome. I mean, it's a great video, so. Yeah. I mean, it <laughs> no definitely wonder. teaches you, so yeah. <laughs> well, speaking of learning, um, you are mostly here today to talk about the Citizens Fire Academy. So, do you want to explain that to our viewers and listeners, what that is? Sure. So, our Citizens Fire Academy has been going for years now. Um, it used to coincide with the, the Citizens Police Academy as well. Um, we kind of fed each other back and forth with... Um, different attendees and and people that come in over the, since COVID though COVID you know restrained us from having it for a year year and a half there and um, we want to build it back we want to bring it back strong um, it's nine weeks um, once a week every Wednesday it's going to start on August 16th and run through October 11th from 5 30 to 8 30 in the evenings <clears throat> the graduation day will be on 10 11 and you'll graduate with a gift from the Asheville Fire Department and um, get a certificate as well. Uh, we provide dinner at every at every meeting. Um, and um, there'll be some instruction and lecture. And with that dinner, we'll also, you know, have firefighters that you can interact with and talk with. Um, with the fire department being a, a vast uh, majority of the city budget, uh, we want to show and, and let people know why we mm -hmm. do things. Yep. And, um, that we are held to standards through different organizations throughout the state and uh, country as well. So then, it's mostly like just a time for the public to come learn and yes. interact with the fire department. Yes. Um, and we, we will answer any question that they bring. If not, if we don't have an answer that night, we'll have it by the next meeting. Okay. And, it's a really uh, great environment. Yeah. Like Jeremy said, um, it's very interactive and so it's not like they just sit and learn there's lots of hands-on and yes. there's lots of interaction that's, with yeah, with different firefighters and stuff yeah you can explain with, like their with, with, with the every agenda. meeting um that we have we always plan a hands-on activity okay so um the first night we'll do um history and we have a great historian he is a wealth a plethora of knowledge in history with not only buncombe county with Asheville fire department but the surrounding areas as well and where some of our old apparatus even still stay. Mm -hmm. um, so um, then we'll do a station tour. We'll get to show you what downtown station's like, um, why it is the way it is and, and what we do with it. Um, then the next the next night we have planned, um, you get to meet Kelly and um, I guess it would be Interim Chief Burnett now, or not Interim Chief Bozinski, not Burnett. Mm -hmm. um, but, and then we, uh, we'll let you try on our turnout gear. We've got some new turnout gear that we keep to where um, we're not getting all the dirt or, or grime that we get on our gear off. So we'll let the see the weight. We'll you know each each I was set say of turnout gear. How heavy it actually is. How heavy is. it is with the air pack. You know we're pushing you know around 80 pounds of extra gear. Wow. So um, and then we're having to run in and, and pull people out. And you guys did that 5K in gear too not that long ago some What's people it? did some it people i'm did. not gonna say i did it <laughs> I, I, it's hard enough for me to do a 5k let alone put a gear on it dude. I'm, not, I'm not gonna run in gear no sorry <laughs> but we do have many firefighters that do it i i, I saw them yeah. i saw them i was like it's like the turkey track during thanksgiving they do that yeah, yeah. <laughs> but during this program we also show you how we interact with our community partners mm -hmm. um with that being ems Buncombe County EMS, which does all the medical uh, transportation yeah. within the, the county and the city. Um, uh, the Red Cross, we, we show you how they teach CPR in the community and where to go get those resources. Okay. Uh, we also use WNC Safe Kids, and they provide bicycle helmets to kids. They provide car seats. They um, different things um, and trainings to to people that may not. Um, do the appropriate thing all the time with restraining car seats and stuff and then they may have to do some intervention classes and stuff like that so mm -hmm. they're a huge resource for our Western North Carolina region not just Asheville or Buncombe County um, and then you know we talk about our fire marshal's office and why we do inspections and what the different departments within the fire marshal's office look like so we have new construction which goes over plans and inspects a building as it is being built <clears throat> And then we have our periodic inspectors, who the businesses see once or to once a year to or you know every three years whenever whatever their business um, requires. Um, and then we have an awesome arson investigations unit. Is that for like to see if a fire how the fire started? Yep. Yes. Oh, that's pretty so cool. So if it's if it's if it's <laughs> ruled, you know, we we have a, a daytime FM ten. And if he sees or she sees that it is uh, 
possibly arson, then we get it, we, we stop, we reboot, we come in, we get APD involved. And oh my God. It turns into a bigger CSI. Thing. Yeah. yeah. We're, we're live at sort of. CSI. We've got wow. uh, cool new cameras that, um, a Matterport camera that takes a 3D whole view of the scene. That is cool too. And then so if you've ever done like a home tour walkthrough with looking at new houses or stuff, it's kind of like that, but you get to see the whole fire scene. Oh, wow. And we even have drones now that we use for... Drones. Can be used for investigation. And we can purposes. set those up while the fire's going on and see exactly how the crews are going around mm-hmm. and doing what they're doing. That's fantastic. And we get to do that like, well, maybe not hands some but see it in action during the academy? Yeah. I mean, I mean, that would be a, a, we, a these are newer additions to our department, so okay. that's probably something he could Bill, incorporate. Bill, will, Bill um, who's over arson investigations in my position, um, usually likes to get pretty in-depth, and so he'll show them pictures. We also use the Matterport, you know, it was bought on a grant for arson investigation, mm-hmm. but we have used it to create an online station tour, especially during, like, when we were shut down for COVID, I had to do a lot of things virtually. So we created a virtual classroom that kids could go in with their teachers and, and pick all these fire safety events. That was great. And then we had to create um, a station tour with this camera. And then so station four was the newest remodeled station at that time. So we chose it because everything looks nice and pretty and new. Um, and so you can actually go through that classroom and do a station tour because we couldn't have kids come to the fire station. Yeah. But we didn't want to not give them the benefit of having. And we did a lot of things in parking lots. Like we did, we didn't miss fire prevention when kids were in school, um, and then we tried to push the virtual options when they were out of school, mm-hmm. if they were if they were homebound. So, feeding that back into every day, the teachers still love that, so they still use it and they still feed it, and they can they can you know bring, bring it up on their smart boards, and the kids can come up and interact. They can put it on their iPads. Oh, that's great. Um, so we're reaching a lot more people. Um, even when we're not in the school ourselves, it gives us a way to be there when we're unavailable. Yeah. Uh, so I want to ask, uh, you're bringing this class for children. So this academy specifically, is there an age limit on, or like we how usually, old do you have to be to We join? usually, 18 and up. 18 and up. Okay. Um, so it's not for little kids. No, <laughs> no, no. We want it just to be, you know, if you're aspiring and you want to know what it's like to be a firefighter before you choose that career path, mm-hmm. we want to give you an inside look. And we've we've done that. Uh, we've had a couple of, of guys and girls come in that, that they think, that they don't know if they want to do fire, if they want to do EMS, if they want to do police. Okay. And then so they, this gives an inside view of, uh, you'll see what a firefighter does every day. Yep. You'll get to meet with them, you'll get to eat dinner with them. Um, and then at the end of the course, we have hands-on activities where you get to see what live fire looks like. You hmm. get to um, you get to cut open a car with the jaws of life. Wow! You get to take off doors. You know. You get to ride in a fire truck. You get to oh. You get to drive a fire truck. <laughs> they get to drive a fire truck. So, I keep, on a controlled uh, course, of course. Uh, yeah, I was not saying because I keep being offered a uh, ride in the fire truck in uh-huh. case of emergency, uh, but yep. I still haven't done it. Yeah, it's so. an amazing it's an amazing um, academy that Jeremy has because, like he was saying, usually it's around eighteen, but we have. All ages, all different members of our community come out. People who are just curious and want to know a little mm-hmm. bit more about the fire department. We have people, city city employees. Uh, we encourage you know all city employees, city council, um, just to learn more about what your fire department does versus just you know assuming fight fire. Yeah. Uh, there's a lot of things that go on behind scenes. From my position, we have training division. We have all kinds of things going on behind scene that now we use these citizens and they become our ambassadors. They have learned more. They can go out and talk about our fire department and literally brag about all the great things that we do. <laughs> and, and it is fun. It's interactive. Like he said, the dinners are with firefighters. You, you often are not at the same location. You meet at different locations. So you see different fire stations. Cool. Okay. Um, so I, I was going to ask that next, you know, it's not all in at the municipal building. No. It's all. Mm-mm. Right. Uh, we, we spread it we'll spread it to a couple of our different stations outlying stations so you can see what the new and old kind of look like and why we still need to bring some of our uh, older stations that were built in the 50s to 70s up and mm-hmm. and yep. to fit not only new trucks but to fit you know current needs for firefighters and you know turn out gear washers and and different ways to close buildings off to keep them isolated from different coursing engines that may be floating out in a, a truck bay that we don't want to live with and we found out that that's you know a reason we need to build walls and put in different wind types of windows and things like that um and then 
take you out to a brand new, well, it's not brand new, it's what, six, seven years old now? Eight years old? The 10 training and center. 11. Oh, the training center. The training center. Um, Which is amazing. People will be amazed. State of the art. Yeah. You know. Where is that? This is up in Woodfin, and, and it's for the whole county, so it's not just a Nashville fire department, but it's a training center for all firefighter fire departments to go out and, and, and do training and keep up on their skills. And it has everything from a live burn building, where you can actually have live fire, to, to propane fires, to high angle. Um, they've incorporated so many you know props and different things that they, uh, that's where we hold our academy is held out there. So the new recruits are being uh, taught out there how to become firefighters and all the props and all the things to, to get them hands on are also out there. So okay. they will, uh, our Citizens Academy, they'll engage in that. We'll talk more about the actual sure. fire academy, um, but thank you for bringing that up. So the Citizens Fire Academy uh, volunteer, what, what do you call them, volunteers? Um, um, well, they're going to volunteer their time for sure in their evening yeah. to spend with us. Um, but it's just, you know, it's, it's citizens that want to be informed. It's, you know, they, they, they see if, if you have an active part in, in, our, in our city and you see and you're wondering why public safety is so expensive. Um, you'll, and you'll, important. <laughs> you're going to look, look and see how much our equipment costs. We'll give you those numbers. Mm -hmm. You'll see what our gear costs. You'll see what it costs to train a firefighter and why we want to retain those, not just hire new ones that might be a little bit cheaper. But um, it's really expensive to train a firefighter, and we want to retain that for as long as we can yep. hopefully their whole career would be at the Asheville fire department because we have a little over 300 employees now it's it's just well it's a little under but we've got an academy going right now and a new one in, in january so so yeah we're getting we're, close we're getting to over 300, 300. mark yep. and okay. a lot of people don't know that you know we're 65 or 69 square miles that we have 12 stations you know, a 13 month about about to open 13 is about to open and um i've even had um fire chiefs come in and uh they were near us that have the kind of the same square mileage demographics and things like that um i was an engineer at station 11 and a fire chief from bend oregon stopped in and was like how tell me how and why so i linked him up with chief burnett but you know knowing that knowledge yeah. um from being in this position um a little bit uh was able to help me you know, pass that on in an appropriate manner. And that's the same knowledge we're going to give all of our citizens. So you're going to know, you know, what the, the demographics um, of Asheville. We mm -hmm. have new programs um, that we can collect a lot of data and tell you where certain age groups are and where we need to target different um, programs, high risk, high risk programs, um, elderly. And um, so we really want to serve, you know, our youth our young youth and our in our elderly population um, we want to make sure that that's those are the two that we want to make sure have the appropriate skills to get out of a fire okay so we teach it in schools but where should we teach it for the elderly so we, right. a lot of times we have to go to community centers or to the, where they're they're living and and have these programs and um, we offer free smoke alarms a okay. lot of people don't know that and they find out through this program through and then they tell you know six degrees of separation from all everybody else so they tell all their friends yeah. mm -hmm. and, and i was gonna bring that up you know how do you teach the elderly i i assume if whoever shows up to the citizens academy they'll learn they'll pass it along indeed. it's always so much fun to tell people what you've learned yes. <laughs> yeah so what I, so. I encourage people who want to sign up grab a friend that's what I, my mom's gonna attend and she's grabbing a friend and it's a new adventure it keeps their mind going and they learn more about their yes. community um, so it's real easy to apply. Uh, it is currently all online right now, but if anybody doesn't have access, they can call the Asheville Fire Department. We'll help them. But otherwise, it's on our website. The application's on our website. It's on social media. So just going to AshevilleNC.gov slash fire, you'll uh, find the Asheville Fire Department and look for the Citizens Academy and just fill it out. Jeremy will receive it. He'll yep. send a message back that he got it and then start giving information of when the when the course starts and um, it is first come first serve, uh, but I don't know that you've ever had to actually turn anybody down. We I have not. Yeah, so don't worry about that. We'll, we'll accommodate as many as we can get. Sounds good. And so the Fire Academy uh, that happens every, twice a year right. for new hires. Um, does this one happen twice a year as well, or is this just a one-time thing? If we had the demand for it, I would gladly run it twice a year. Um, we were trying to run this program in the spring 
and you know when the weather gets nice and pretty everybody wants to go outside mm -hmm. and, and i think that was some things that may have been hindering so we're trying to run yep. it in the fall this year to see when people are kind of slowing down maybe they have the time um to spend one evening away from your family with the fire department and and mm -hmm. get to learn and know what we do um and why we have to do it this way yeah no i think it's a super important thing you know i don't know much about fire and i see kelly about once a week or so mm -hmm. um so i mean i i'll send up if i can <laughs> it would be really interesting to see it and i know a lot of people who you know we talk about they ask me oh you're for the city there's the fire department for the city too and it's like yes we're the same um come check them out come learn yeah. about it <laughs> yeah and it, i mean it was built for citizens but it could also be for people who want to get into um if you're you're, you're thinking about stepping up and running for a position for city council or or mm -hmm. something like that and you want to know more and get to know the city and the people that work for it this is a great program to get you involved because you know we we're the fire department yeah but we still use you know a lot of other departments we work in inter interconnected with a lot of other departments in the city so you'll get to see how that aspect connects us as well that's great yeah well um so sign up during uh not during <laughs> at ashlandc.gov slash fire just look for citizen fire academy, yeah. citizen academy. Fire academy. And well, Jeremy will get in touch with you. Yep. Um, at the same time, I do want to talk more about, you know, the ins and outs of the hiring process. Sure. How does that work? Is the Fire Academy just a more intense version than the Citizens Fire Academy? Is it like similar but more intense or is it completely different? It's completely different. Um, definitely, we are training these new hires to be firefighters. And so they will gradually learn all the behind the things um, and, and, and incorporates in the academy. The academy their academy is at least five months long. They wow. will become certified as an EMT, firefighter mm -hmm. one and two, a technical rescue is what we call it, and also get their car seat certification. So that five months, they're very busy learning how to be a Nashville firefighter. So it is like a full-time job yes. as you learn the Definitely. ropes. They are hired um, as a full-time employee as soon as they start, you know, they get the benefits and everything like that. They okay. are an Asheville firefighter, um, but they do have to go through the academy in order to, to become an online, we call it online firefighter, um, to be certified. Okay. And what goes into that? Uh, you, you mentioned the training facility. Um, I assume you use dummies and you have different, like... Where do you get the cars from to throw them apart? <laughs> uh, we, we are very fortunate that we have a lot of local businesses that will donate cars. They'll bring them out there and, and um, we'll, we have the ability to cut them up and train our firefighters. Uh, I think our local businesses know how important it is for our firefighters to know this mm -hmm. for our community, right? So that they can be fully trained and up to skill and up to level of, of serving our community. So I don't think we've ever had a problem getting cars yeah. i think jeremy even gets it for the citizens yeah, academy yeah, so that we, we can them. share with them we get them um you know they're all crashed cars they've been in wrecks so it's you you, you want to train not only uh, our firefighters but our citizens to know what when we roll up on a, an accident scene we never know what we're going to do so firefighters are great problem solvers yeah so that's what i teach our, our citizens is like this is always a problem we're going to encounter and no never are there two calls it's going to be a lock so we um we train those to them and if you know they may end up making it look worse because they may turn it over on its top or they may but the rollback will bring up drop off a wreck car um that's going to the crusher anyway and then we we will cut it up and make it way smaller and then they can take it and um mm -hmm. and, and dismantle it or just crush it however they like but wow. these are <laughs> these, just are, these are all cars that and, and they'll put dummies in them turn them over and we have to rescue out mm -hmm. um a lot of the live fire training, they will use rescue dummies, or they will put, uh, you know, real people in real there. people in there that to act as victims. And um, it's, it's, it's in, this new state of the art training facility out there is phenomenal. Yeah. And it's all one, you know, they can shut it down with one button if something goes wrong. Okay. So we want to train our firefighters to success. We don't want to train them to fail because that's not good to pull out of your memory bank. Yeah. No. I mean, I, I think this is something the city uh, overall likes to do is quality over quantity yes. um, and that takes time and resources but I think at the end of the day it's worth it because yes. I like yes. I'll be blunt I don't want just anybody right. riding around right. the fire truck exactly. <laughs> I want to make sure that if I see those lights flashing and I'm the one yeah. in trouble that I'll 
I'll be in good hands. And, and a lot of people don't know how what it means to be an accredited an accredited agency like we are. So we are held to standards, um, and we meet or exceed those standards every day. Mm -hmm. And it's because of the training that we put into our firefighters. Yep. And not only are we held to standards, we hold ourselves to those standards. Yes. We don't have to be accredited. We have chosen to become accredited, and we have maintained that you know, every five years we get reaccredited. We say, hey, we're still meeting these standards, plus we're doing this much more. Because we do want to stay up with the new technology. We want to uh, serve this, the community the best that we can, so we're always improving. Obviously, there's always new technology, new skills, new yep. tools, new whatever, and we stay up to that. Everything from the water that is in the hydrants <laughs> to communication, us talking to each other, to mm -hmm. all the fire and life safety education programs we deliver, all the social media posts and how many they reach. I mean, they look, the accredited agency looks at all of that to say, hey, yeah, Asheville, you're top notch. And I appreciate that. I appreciate the effort that goes, you know, because you could be just a random yeah. little yeah. <laughs> fire station. That and our firefighters, <laughs> you know, we have so many, there, there's so many just really dedicated, um, strong working and committed, committed mm -hmm. people. Uh, like Jeremy said, we're, firefighters are a different breed in the sense that they are problem solvers and they're also pleasers. And so they're, they are, I truly believe they're born to serve and, and help others and also um, as an honor to work as an Asheville firefighter. Yeah, I was gonna say it's it takes a lot that many people don't have. I don't think I could be a firefighter. <laughs> um, and I I do want to point out that you know if you see someone in uniform walking around Asheville or if you go to the fire station now uh, just when I met you guys today you were talking to mm -hmm. some folk out there explaining I didn't catch the uh, right, the overall right. but you're just talking with the public mm -hmm. and uh, I think that's great. Yeah. You're approachable, and you we, just we constantly want to help build out. relationships. We're always um, there for the community, whether we're at a grocery store, out to eat, in front of a station, or we're on always... a pigman driving around, yep. saving someone from a fire, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and off duty. Off duty, <laughs> we're always we're always uh, at our best. Hopefully, at our best, we do we try our best to um, serve serve the community and help them. That's what we're here for. Well, I just want to thank you. Uh, we're running out of time, sure. but. Um, is there anything that you want to go over before we finish the show? I think I just want to mention, we did talk a little bit about our academy. And um, if anybody's interest, interested, we do have an AFD hire email. They can reach out to us, ask us any questions. We will take our time and um, explain what it all in, encounters and what's expected. You do not have to have prior um, firefighting skills. I didn't uh, even many many years ago I didn't um, but we are looking for really strong driven individuals who who want to serve serve their community um, and we are constantly hiring every July and January we start a new Academy um, and if, if you're looking for that type of position change in life please reach out to us we will definitely um, open the doors and answer any questions and um, you know we're a pretty we're pretty diverse in um, uh, department and we're looking to keep that up so uh, I'm here as a woman saying I've been there 27 years and you know we encourage women to apply we encourage everyone to apply um, we're gonna hire the best of the best 27 years and doing a good job at it too thank you. <laughs> well thank you so much both of you uh, it was thank a you. pleasure and we'll see you next time in what's up Asheville here on WRES 100.7 FM take care of one another Asheville You've been listening to What's Up Asheville, sponsored by the city of Asheville in collaboration with WRS 100.7 FM. This program will re-air every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 1230. Thank you for listening.